This video is gonna teach you how to play the Hadria expansion for Veiled Fate, a strategic deduction game for two to eight players. In this expansion, you'll encounter a brand new character during your quest to capture the throne, Hadria. And you should be afraid because she will mercilessly annihilate you if you're ahead of her on the score track at the end of the game. Hadria completely reimagines how you think about earning and losing points in Veiled Fate. It is basically impossible to have a runaway game. The Hadria expansion also introduces favor cards, which allow you to perform god powers more easily, making you feel more powerful than ever before. To set up, place Hadria in the abyss and set her renown marker on the one space. Then shuffle the favor cards together. If playing with fewer than six players, remove one of each type of favor card before creating the favor deck. Then draw two cards from the favor deck and place them side by side between the abyss and the pools. Whenever a demi leaves Hadria's space by movement or by god power, Hadria follows them to their new space. For instance, if a demi moves from the abyss to the pools and Hadria is in the abyss, she will follow. If a demi from the pools is portaled and Hadria is in the pools, she will follow. Hadria can never be placed on quests, but she will follow demis into quest regions. Also, note that Hadria cannot be moved manually. She can only be moved by following demigods around the board. Hadria can gain or lose renown throughout the game following these rules. Whenever a demi is smited for any reason, Hadria gains one renown. Whenever a quest is completed in a region that Hadria is occupying, Hadria loses a renown. If you're playing with the Servants expansion, Hadria loses two renown if Invictus is also in the same region as a completed quest. Note that Hadria's renown tracker always occupies the front spot of a renown space no matter what. When moving a demi from the abyss to the pools, you no longer draw a fate card. Instead, take one of the two favor cards in the abyss and add it to your hand. Immediately replace the removed card with the top card of the favor deck. Once the favor deck empties, do not replenish the abyss favor display. Once this happens, the reward for moving a demi to the pools is one fate card as it is in the base game. Note that the favor cards do not count against players' eight fate card hand limit, and there is no hand limit for favor cards. In addition to your two standard actions, you may play one favor card from your hand each turn. To play a favor card, place it face up in front of you and immediately perform the god power indicated. Also, note that a player does not automatically rest if they use or gain a favor card on their turn. Each favor card has zero to three corruption symbols on it. The total amount of corruption amongst each player's played cards will be important at the end of the game. After players reveal demi cards, the demis with the most corruption symbols in front of them lose one renown. Favor cards in hand do not contribute to a player's corruption total, only played cards in front of them do. In six to eight player team games, combine the corruption total of teammates when determining which demis lose one renown. Finally, Hadria annihilates all demis with more renown than her. Remove their renown markers from the board as those demis are now disqualified from winning. Thus, the winner is the demi with the most renown behind Hadria. In a seven player game, the solo player, not on a team, gains their renown after Hadria annihilates all demis with more renown than her. And that does it. We hope you've enjoyed learning how to play the Hadria expansion for Veiled Fate. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below or on Discord.